In Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, Andy Serkis plays the voice of Varden Kai, a Grand Master of the Grey Knights and Steward of the Armoury. Last year, I had the opportunity to catch up with Andy whilst also learning how to paint Grey Knights from Games Workshop's very own Peachy. Hi, welcome. I'm Arthur from Frontier Developments, and I'm here with the wonderful, delightful Andy Serkis. Hi there. Uh, Andy is playing uh, Varden Kai in Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. Uh, and you may have noticed that next to me, a uh, better looking version of myself, is the wonderful Peachy from Games Workshop. And Peachy's going to be helping us paint some figures today. Fantastic. Andy. So, uh, I'll hi. be gentle. Please, <laughs> I warn you in advance. My painting level is is is, is low. I'm I worried. Don't believe that to be true. Well, you've you've paint, so I'm worried. <laughs> These are the ones that I've done earlier. Yes, by the way. You, was, yeah. Strong, strong I mean, start. Strong start. It's a weird flex, yeah. Andy, when we <laughs> asked if you were going to paint, and you brought a whole battle force with I you. Know, but well, yeah. <laughs> I guess what we'll do is we we'll get started with our first stage. Yep. So, Pete, you want to talk us through what we've got, and then yep, we're going to start, and then we'll get cracking. It's, well, the first thing you need is your white brush. Now, uh, uh -huh. that's a base coat brush, so we're going to do some base coating. Right. So in front of you, you've got a pot of a colour called Grey Knight Steel, perfectly named colour Grey to be Knight used steel. for Grey Knights. Right. So it's also a blue steel, so it's quite pretty. So all you're going to be doing... Uh, oh, shake it. Yeah, oh yeah, that's... that's I'm guessing, I'm guessing. Give it, I'm a little guessing. shake. <laughs> Metallics can be a bit of a, a nightmare, actually. Sometimes they do separate. But uh, yeah, quick shake and then pop it open. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Right, open the paint. Pot. Yeah, so right as you can see, it's quite a, a beautiful colour actually. It's like yeah, it's proper lovely, reflecting yes. the light. Now, when we're doing base coat, we never use it straight from the pot. I know, like in the old days when we used to like, use enamels and stuff, we were talking about that earlier. Like, you just go straight and dip it on and apply it to the model. The best thing to do is apply a couple of thin coats. Okay. So, what we're going to do is you've got your palette yep. just there. So, just dip your, your brush in, not all the way to the metal pot, the ferrule. All oh, right. we don't want to get there, that'll ruin your brush. So, just right. you know, apply some to the palette and you just need a touch of water. So, all you're doing is just spreading some. All right. right, so you make it a thin. Yeah, kind of just glaze a thin coat, thing. absolutely. Uh, if you have your tongue sticking out to one angle, that helps balance your brush <laughs> as well. I right? believe that's yeah. a lie, but I, I will try my best not to put my tongue out. I don't think anyone wants to see that. Um, so, Andy, whilst you're trying not to, Andy, whilst you're painting, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a series of questions. So, mm -hmm. um, you've played many, many roles sort of over your career, um, sort of from CGI characters that we all know and love um, to, to real world characters like Ian Drury and Sex, Drugs and Rock and Roll. Uh, you've also done voiceover work, um, Arthur Christmas, great name, by the way. Um, and then, uh, obviously, now you're, you're Varden Kai in Grey Knights, Demon Hunters. Now, that's quite a, a range of characters and performances to, I don't know, throw yourself at. Is there a different way to, to prepare for those sort of roles, or do you do a one-set way of doing things? Um, well, at the end of the day, you know, whether you're playing a CG character or you're playing a, a live-action character on screen or, or whether you're on stage, for that matter, mm -hmm. um, for me, it, it, it's all the same thing. You know, act, acting is acting and it's not... There isn't... Um, I think as you go through life as an actor, you, you uh, assemble different skills, different, you learn different things along, along the way, different processes. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain actors who have their own set ways and work in one particular method and, and adhere to old acting teachers like Stanislavski or Lee Strasberg or kind of, you know, or, or follow certain schools of thought. But really for me, it's really... My journey has been very much a sort of uh, journey, a sort of magpie's journey, and sort of picking up lots of different things along the way, working with different directors and you know storytellers and you know filmmakers, and and uh, I suppose. Uh, so in in answer to your question, I don't think there's any difference, sort of uh, between creating a CG character or, or I don't think of them in mm -hmm. any different way or, or doing a voiceover. You're, you're inhabiting a role, basically. Yeah. You're stepping into the mindset. You're walking in the shoes of another character. You're, you're, you're assembling a psychology, a physicality, even a physicality, even if you're doing a voice. I was going to ask, is, is, it, um, is it difficult if you're doing lines and the other actors aren't in the room with you? Is that harder or is it you have something to bounce off from as soon as you read the other lines? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, obviously when you're on set, um, you, 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 you're looking into the eyes of nothing like looking into the eyes of another actor. But when you're doing voiceover work, or whether if you're, if you're like recently actually, I was I was doing the audio book of um, uh, Lord of the Rings. Yep. And uh, and I was I think I, there's like 112, 115 characters. And so so f for that process, for instance, um, f the only way I could get my head around remembering all of the different characters' voices was by 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 having my head 
at, at different placements to where the mic was. So, for instance, you know, oh, wow. one character would be down here, one would be up here, one would be over here, and, it, and there's a physicality that would come so that your muscle memory takes you into that place for that voice. Yeah. And so, so that's, that's... Was that a trick you learned? Was that something you developed as you were doing no, it? No, it literally came about as I was doing because wow. I thought, I'm never going to remember all these different character yeah, yeah. voices. Would you consider yourself a traditional actor? Would you, would you say that you're sort of... You said magpie way, which was a really interesting way of describing your sort of career. So you've sort of cher not cherry picked, but learned different things from different roles, and well, not actually, I'm going to take that with me and mould it. Is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, up until I mean, up until really the point where I did start working on Lord of the Rings. You know, I, I mean, I'd wanted to be a filmmaker before up to that point too. But so I was starting to look at life beyond. I started off in theatre, then I then I went into TV and film, and worked on the, in the British independent film scene for quite some time and then and then when Lord of the Rings came along and I, I started working on that obviously the whole world of visual effects like opened opened up to me and, and particularly obviously a, a, a motion capture which mm -hmm. then became performance capture and and it was really it, it opened a huge portal into another world for me because in order to understand how that worked I, uh, I was engaging you know I was one of the well I was the only cast member really who was fully engaging with animators uh, you know, CG artists, um, you know, technicians, coders, or, you know, that whole world that opened up, the, video, yeah. the kind of video game technology, all of that world, I, I suddenly found myself placed in the middle of it, Weta in New Zealand. And so I was so fortunate. And as a film, you know, an aspiring filmmaker, it was, it really suited me down it's to the right game. time. Do you think yeah. it's the right, right person, right time sort of thing? hundred yeah, percent. Into, into place. And, and, it, and it's sort of in a way, when I think about it, looking back and, and going back to what I was saying at the beginning about, about wanting to be a, a visual artist in some way, it sort of brought together literally everything that interested me. Performance, design, character building, world building. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was, a. Uh, it, it, it just brought it just brought everything together. It was a yeah. really kind of seminal moment in my life where I just suddenly found myself being surrounded by incredible talent, all, all doing the sorts of things that interested me. You know? Yeah. Before we go on, I guess Peachy's been watching me. I've, well, I yeah. say watching. I can see in your eyes, Peachy, that my work here is not stellar. Um, but it's okay. If, I think if it was a race, it's definitely it's, yeah. like, I mean, it's, it's like learning a character. It's like you know, you're taking the first step towards, you know, am I going to walk like this? Am I going to, you know, this is just the base code. Yeah. Thank but you for the words of confidence. Then. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen it. <laughs> okay, I'm more on a base than the character. Just missed a bit, by the way. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we try? Is this the stage Ooh, two? We want to yeah, stage, stage two. two. Wow. So there's another model next to you. I want to put quickly. this incredibly well painted stage one down over here. Well, you've got your base coat down to a T there, Andy. Oh, well, thanks, mate. Thank you. We've right. got, we got all that. All right, all right, I'm sorry. So, you want the next one along, which is one that's been base coated with Grey Knight Steel. What we're going to do here is you're going to use. This one. Yeah, that's the one. That's the fella. My guy looks nothing like that I've just painted. Is it, does it dry separately then? Does it dry a different colour? It, no, yeah, it, it will dry. So it, sometimes it depends on how many coats you put on as well. So, I mean, like did you say we're using a different brush? Yeah, yeah. You've, you've picked up the right one. I, I, I don't. No, I, I, didn't, I, saw you I don't think that. I, I, <laughs> I feel like I've been cheated here. Like, I feel like I've been cheated here. And it's just like, oh, it's this print brush. And yeah. it's just it's done. Right. And so, so we're going to have a crack at doing some of it where we're using these that two. Away now. Oh yeah, you can pop that in on. We've got a contrast paint here, but we've also got something called contrast medium. And what that's useful for is thinning down the contrast paint. So imagine it's it's that paint, but without no pigment in it. Now, we're not going to use it straight from the pot, because if you do, it'll just, like, make it super blue. So we're going to try and get this kind of, like, blue shimmer effect on the model. So what you're going to do is get one paintbrush of contrast paint, so the blue paint, and then, to thin it down, you're going to need five paintbrushes of this clear, sort of, whitey fluid. So that much. It's like an artist medium, if you've ever used oh, an artist medium. beautiful colour, though. Look at that. It is. Oh, it's so vibrant. So, yeah, one... It's, we, I always use the brush as a measuring tool, but it's like one part of this, five parts of the other thing. So, give me a brush. Is, this like, is this like, you know, taking ketchup out of a... I mean, am I going to spoil it for everybody else? Oh, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just going to coat it over the inside model. Just be uh, mindful. So all over, yeah? All over. Yeah, I mean, you'll find it will pull as, it, as gravity pulls it down. Just use your brush to soak any bits up there look like they're starting to pull in the wrong places. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. So... You were, you were talking about your work on sort of Lord of the Rings and motion performance uh, as it is, has become now. When I was younger, I, I would often sit on a Saturday or Sunday and watch um, the Harry Harrison movies with uh, Dad and my brother, and we'd watch, it would be Sinbad or Jason the Argonauts or yeah. something like that. And the work that he, he did with you know, stop motion was incredible. You are a pioneer, if not the pioneer, of motion, modern motion performance. Are you conscious of the effect that you've had in sort of bringing that into 
to the modern times. I too, you know, I was a massive Ray Harryhausen fa uh, fan. I, I remember growing up being uh, obsessed by the, the, you know, the skeleton fight in yeah. Jason and the Argonauts, and uh, you know, all, all of that, all of those things. Um, and I, I, I actually spent a bit of time. I get, when we were doing Lord of the Rings, I got to spend some time with Ray because he came down to New Zealand, and, and also I then uh, met him later on. In, That's uh, incredible. And and it, to to actually, you know to actually have conversations with someone who I'd, I'd been such a huge fan of. It was just like, you know, I was blown away. I was yeah. to totally, totally blown away by, by him. In terms of my, myself, I, I count myself very lucky that I was sort of in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. and, and I happened to, I, I, loved the t I loved the use of performance capture because it's uh, uh, just, as a, just as a kind of philosophically as an actor, what it enabled you to do, which is to, which is, Really, for me, the way I see it is it's in a very egalitarian way of any actor playing anything. I mean, you can become anything mm -hmm. using using this technology. You can you can step into the shoes of any creature, any kind of other human being. It's like it's like reminds me of Mr. Ben. You remember that? Yeah, TV yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Where yeah, you yeah. go into the, the, yeah. the shop and the shopkeeper, you know, he rings the bell and then puts on a suit. What am I going to be today? And you put on a suit and then you go, out, you know, and it's it's that with a with a CG. Yeah. with an avatar character and so I, I feel lucky and count myself lucky that I was at the, as I say right place right time and Gollum is is sort of seen as a, a, a sort of um, a turning point if you like in from visual effects into character yeah I think after that uh, moment in time fair, people yeah. sort of started to think that you could imbue the CG characters with real with real humanity or mm -hmm. you know you could anthropomorphize them you can make them or, or, or make them sentient and and believable and um, engage with them emotionally I suppose that was that was the key step and and I and look I, I just happened to be there at the right time and so I sort of feel a bit like I tried to explain this before and it's like it's like being you know the, the incredible teams build the Grand Prix car sure yeah and 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 you get to be the one who sits in a driving seat and drive yeah. around the track and, and and that's that's sort of how I feel I count as I say count myself very lucky is it harder um, performing as a creature than it is to put a character on screen that's got written lines or dialogue and it's got very clear sort of this is the motivation this character is this. Well, that's a good question because the same the, the same questions applied to when, when I played Caesar. But in fact, Kong, Kong, we decided that you know, in our version, in Peter Jackson's version, that which came out in two thousand five, that he was we we based him very strongly on a silverback gorilla. Mm -hmm. You know, he just happened to be a giant scale. So yeah. so he, I, I went and studied uh, gorillas in Rwanda, and and uh, and then I went to London Zoo and formed a, a, a quite a strong bond with a, a, a relationship with a with a female gorilla. And there were there were two other gorillas there. One was a male gorilla called Bob, and one the other one I can't remember her name. But anyway, he'd been Bob had been brought in as part of a. This is a like, massive diversion. But no, anyway. no, I, I love this. This is, a, this is what I want. This, 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 yeah. Bob was brought in as part of the, the breeding, a breeding program, and and uh, he, but it wasn't going well for him, and the, the the females were not having anything of him. And I actually was getting on with quite well with Zaire, and Bob did not like me. I was going to say, oh, okay. He <laughs> really didn't like me, yeah. and every time I went anywhere near him, he'd, he'd be quite threatening and aggressive. And and he he was very smart. There was one time where where. Um, He'd be watching me, and they were in separate enclosures. And then, and then uh, he he was watching me and making sure that I didn't take my eyes off his eyes. And then he was gathering while all the time he was gathering all these stones and s bits of rubble and bit of things that were in his cage. And then when, I, when he just <laughs> like that, he just threw he, he he kept my gaze as he threw them at me, you yeah. know. And it was just like. OK, all right. It was a really great lesson in conveying emotion and thoughts and feelings which are there. That is something that the audience can relate to, something that you can relate to as an actor, and then you play the truth of that, of, of, of that relationship. And how have you got on with this stage? Um, I think I've gone very blue because I've been talking a lot. Piling. <laughs> I mean, Lou's I think, good. But, yeah, but Lou's good. Yeah, I'm looking at you. But Andy's, you can, how are you doing it? You're just covering it properly. I've got these <laughs> massive spaces where I'm just missing loads of No, bits. I don't believe it. We're going to do some dry brushing now. This is a bit, right. bit of fun. So all you're going to do is get some paint. Not too much. I'm going to demonstrate here. So all you're going to do is get probably like a millimetre or two on your bristles. Like so. And then you're just going to rub it off onto your tissue paper. So is it, you, sorry, is yeah, this, this silver one? here. Yeah, it's called Stormo silver. It's a very beautiful colour. So you're just going to dip dip a little bit into is that, that. Is that too much? Uh, what you, no, no, what you're going to do is you're going to... I suggest doing circular motions and crisscross motions and be rough with the brush. It's designed to be rough. So right. just rub as much off as you can and keep going, keep going. 
And then when, and just move to the side where there's, like, there's no paint and just see if there's any paint still on there. Oh, keep going, Andy, keep going. Proper rub into it, that's it. Imagine... So it's kind of like scumbling. Yeah, yeah, you, what, what you're doing is you're, you're removing most of the pigment, but you're leaving elements of it on the bristles, and then that's, that's about right. Yeah. So imagine you're tickling it or, like, dusting for, like, dinosaur bones. So that's something I don't ever imagine you'd say about a grey knight. Imagine I was tickling it. Well, yeah. well all right, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 can, I can do that. <laughs> and you'll notice you'll start to pick out those raised bits and you're just gently going backwards and forwards. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're, you're getting the highlights, basically. Yeah, yeah it's, and you, you can do it as heavy as you want or as light as you want. The, as you build up the layers, you, you probably want to go more lighter and lighter as... As you go through, oh, but yeah, yeah. Oh, that's I should, cool. I should I like wind this. my neck in and be quiet while you're. No, 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 please, please, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Is there a chance that people could make a mistake of putting oh, too much brush? Oh, I've paint done on this. Brush. I've done it on tanks, and you get like there's a bit of pigment embedded in the brush, and it just gives you a big silver streak down the side of the. Do you tank. work that into the model? Yeah, that so becomes bullet battle damage. Yeah, bullet battle damage. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Um, so, Andy, obviously you're playing um, Varden Kai in, in, in Grey Knights, Demon Hunters. So, I don't want to say too much about the character, I don't want to give too much away, but what did you, what did you, how did you find creating that character and, and what would you say players to expect from him? Well, I mean, the, the thing is, Varden Kai is, um, so he's Grandmaster and he is uh, a steward of the armory. But yet, he is, there is this master relation master pupil relationship mm -hmm. so so he doesn't he's he's a tough he's a, he, it's tough love basically yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's very much about and it and he can come across as really quite brutal and and uh, unforgiving he's a sort of he's a sort of person i imagined kind of very rarely cracked a smile very very rarely <laughs> and he's like yeah. a formidable kind of granite face i had in my mind this sort of kind of rock, this granite kind of features, very stern. But then occasionally, you, you know, if you were so lucky, he might flash you a look and, and just and let that go. And you feel like a million bucks, but he's like... <gasps> yeah, because... An almost smile. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's... it's that, that was the sort of the image, image that I had in my head of him, really. Yeah. Um, Peachy, how are we, how we getting on? Well, I, I, how I did stopped. you find dry brushing? That's the, uh, the question. I found it. Easy. <laughs> I love that. I, love that. I could <laughs> dry brush yeah, all yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. It actually made me feel like I was doing really good work. I was like, look at the highlight. I'm instant doing instant this. Instant techniques about, you know, all the uh, effort of sitting there, staying in your hand. What I was thinking of doing is moving on to some gold, where all the script work is. Ah, oh, yeah, quite yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. And if we thin the gold down, what will happen is, as it goes in the recess, because you've done all that highlighting, it's just going to instantly do all the highlighting for you. So, yeah, paintbrush of the uh, gold and then probably two to three paintbrushes of water and you just, because you've got a nice fine point as well, one of the things I always recommend is just spinning your brush a little bit when it's on the palette and this helps maintain a nice point to your This brush. is the thing I watched you do on the video. So I did do some homework <laughs> on, on some painting and this is the bit I can never get right. Yeah, so it's just so, like, look, imagine this is the, the palette here and all you're doing is just twisting your brush and it helps get you a nice point as well. How much water is it? Uh, probably three paintbrushes of it. Uh, that'll it's make quite it, a bit of water, isn't it? Yeah, make it quite runny, but what, what's going to happen is it's going to go into the cracks, and as it dries, it just pulls away from the edges, and you're only concentrating this on this script work on the model, so where you've got all the little panels. So this is why you need a This is where brush. my shaky so hand... Script, script work, so you? Yeah, these? so you've got like, uh, like loads of little details on his shoulders. Oh, I see. So yeah. there's lots of little bits and bobs in there. Like, and like you know what? If you get it on the, uh, on the silver, we'll just tidy back up later. So in 2012, you, you, you founded uh, Imaginarium Studios. Yeah. Um, now, obviously it's had quite a lot of success already. Do you want to just talk a little bit about like what Imaginarium Studios is, what it's attempted to do, and just a little bit about it for, for people that may or may not know about Imaginarium? After I did, I did King Kong, which was actually came out in 2005, um, I came back to, to the UK from, uh, from New Zealand, and I was really fired up about the possibilities of, of all things performance capture. And I, I was asked to um, direct the performance capture for, a, or, or see about the possibility of bringing performance capture into a video game. Oh, so right. I worked with a c company called Ninja Theory, mm -hmm. uh, who were uh, who were quite groundbreaking of their time in the sense that it was they were looking at creating a game which was one of the first of its type to really dig into the uh, into characters, into storytelling in a big way. So it wasn't just wasn't just purely gameplay and, and sort of hack and slash. It was it was it was There's actually emotion behind it. Yeah, th there was a, yeah. a real story behind uh, and, and journey behind, um, and that that you could the, the, what we were trying to do was make the the going going from gameplay into the drama seamless. Yeah, 
and and so that the emotion carried on and then you find yourself in the battle or whatever and then you've got all, all the task or whatever the part of the journey that you're on so i've teamed up with my uh, with with a very well known film producer and uh, well he still is a very well known film producer uh, jonathan cavendish who's became we're very extremely close friends and and uh, and we formed the imaginarium studios and and the imaginarium studios was formed not just to be a sort of place where you could go and capture uh, characters but it was somewhere we we saw it as a sort of place really uh, with with a view to looking at the possibility of next generation storytelling mm -hmm. and and bringing writers and directors and filmmakers and and looking at all different forms of expression how performance capture could be used in in for anything from you know uh, you know how we might be able to bridge a gap with theater how we might be able to you know use um, VR and AR and all all mm -hmm. all the sorts of emerging technologies. So it was sort of like create a creatively led studio to to looking at the possibility of how we're going to tell stories in the next 10, 20, 30 years time. It's, it's, as you were saying, I was thinking about how that's that a couple of questions, I guess, like how it's the sort of motion performance has evolved in the in the I would say probably a relatively short period of time since it's sort of sort of uh, we'd say the, the turning point of of, of Gollum. Uh, to where it is today, but also the tools that now provides directors to be like, actually, nothing is impossible anymore because this technology exists and, and the, then the, the actors exist to bring this to life. So it's, it's almost full circle. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. now like providing tools back to those that, that, the original. So that's incredible. But also, the, the other thing is, the interesting thing is, is, you know, back in the day, like filmmakers and the, the world of film really looked down on the video game industry as a sort of, you know, this isn't. It's not proper storytelling. It's not proper. There's, there's not proper artistry. It's, it's. You know, it's, it's kind of a sub, yeah, culture kind of yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, which, 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 which didn't have any artist, really artistic merit. Which is now, the whole film industry revolves around video game technology because in pre-production you can scout virtually, you can scout locations, you, you, you build characters, you see how they move, you see, you know, you do, you, you, it's, it's virtual production then seamlessly goes in, pre-production mm -hmm. rather, seamlessly goes into filming and then into post-production. So the pipeline all the way through is driven a lot by video game engine technology. Yeah. And so, so it's, it's actually, so like you're saying, along with performance and the bringing together of performance um, and the ability to, to translate performance into all of these different things and creatures and people, um, you know, it's simultaneously it, it, it's grown that that uh, it, the, the evolution of video the video game technology, where where you can in real time now build 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 sets, yeah. um, and then you can have interactive lighting. You're going to light this shot from I want to bring daylight over from here. It's going to be about four o'clock in the afternoon, so the sun's just setting. Or you know, if it's winter, it's going to be lower. And, you know, you can do all of that in pre-production, yeah. so that when you're going out on location, you know what you what, you, what you're going to get. So I guess for someone like yourself, you, you, I mean, you do the full spectrum of, of work. I mean, that must be a, a huge tool for you to use before be like right okay I, I, want, I have a scene in my mind yeah. and I, I, I in my mind I want it visualized but I, I can now see it I can yeah. actually now see it without yeah. having to spend days and days and days doing this thing or, or, or getting it right so yeah it's incredible that um, it's moved from in that space of time to what we have now um, where do you see it going like what's what's next what do you think is well, next? we were just talking about this earlier today actually and um, uh, you know one of the w one of the ambitions certainly for me as a storyteller is to try and bring together the worlds of Theatre and, um, and and film and it, it's sort of starting to happen and filmmakers are seeing the possibilities of this now where where you're where you're creating something that is visceral and immersive and you're inside it's a story that you're telling it has it has the, all the drama of a big screen movie but you're inside that world and you are part of that world so so that you are you know whether it is using VR or AR but it's so it's it's um, we were, we were discussing earlier, you know, you can do that as a solo experience, yeah. much like playing a video game, but, yeah. but, it's a, but, but, but you're walking through performances, you know, you're going through, you can see yourself as an avatar within that. That would be incredible. Um, but it's still a solo experience, so the trick is now, how do you make it a collective experience mm -hmm. and still have that and still be, yeah. or see, you know, like a bunch of, you know, a bunch of mates, you go out, you go out for, 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 for on a Friday night, instead of going to sitting in a cinema, you go to a place where you put on um, um, some uh, 
bands and around your wrists and ankles and then you put on a visor, a 3, 3D visor and you go into this environment or world and story and with your friends and that, and that you're, you know, you're, enjoy, you're enjoying that kind of, the dr there's drama that's happening that you can stop and watch and be amazed at and things are, are, are all around you but then you're, 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 go you're continuing on the journey yeah. with it. You know? That would be incredible. I think for me personally, some, some of my gr most memorable experiences have been with crowds being in a cinema or, yeah. or a theatre because it's it, there is you have a personal emotion but then when it's a group there's nothing quite like it when That's like right. and it could be the same i guess with a, like a, a sports match or you watch it that yeah. emotion is yeah. it's contagious and like if you have yeah. a bit um sadness happiness fear it, it's incredible you can have your own personal experience but it's a thousand fold when there's a hundred people doing That's it right. like it's it's crazy so to imagine your level of storytelling to be given free scope with that would be well, I'm excited. So you can, so you can, choose, you can move around and choose your own viewpoint. You yeah. almost become your own director. But uh, you know, and but if, and then if you imagine that you could get together, say, 50, 70, up to 100 people, all with visors in, and if, I mean, you have to make sure that everybody's safe and nobody yeah. trips up over each other, I suppose. But, but, um, but, but that's that's the sort of area that I'm beginning to become more interested. Yeah, that's in, incredible. Well, that's just got me like, the po but again, I, I'm. Like you, the possibilities that must present you, like if you can do it, like yeah, the, the, the sky's the limit. It's not even enough. Like it's beyond the, yeah, yeah, the sky. Yeah. That's incredible. One of the things I saw you do um, very recently, um, uh, you, you read the, the Hobbit for charity, a sort of live read, um, which was incredible to watch you do it actually. Um, and you, you did seem very tired at the end, but like you were like, almost <laughs> almost euphoric, like it's done. And I'm like, it was a monumental effort. Um, and I. I I don't know exactly. I think like 280k or just over 280k. It was over th I think we did over three. We did over three in the end. That's yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. Um, you do a huge amount of work for charities and different charities. Um, is there anything you're involved in currently, or you're looking at, or anything you can give a shout out now? We could and, and direct people to help support or stuff. Like yeah, that? Yeah, there's there's an amazing charity called um, Medi Cinema, and Medi Cinema is. Uh, is this fantastic organisation which literally uh, provides a cinematic experience in hospitals for, oh, uh, for, for and, and it really, uh, I've been down and watched films with, with and then people are brought down from wards and they may have a terminal illness, they may, you know, they may have not been out or been able to have any sort of normality or be with their family or, you know, like at Great Ormond Street, you know, the kids who, who, who are in long-term hospital situations and, and, and every week or two weeks they get taken down uh, to, to a cinema and it's built in such a way that be beds can be brought in oh, wow. and they get to, to and for so, I mean it's it's really it's such a powerful um, very simple thing to offer but it can transport you you know what it's like you yeah. go to a cinema and you watch a film and it transports you into another world for yeah. for two hours and so for, for that short period of time with their families they can you know just just exist in another another world and yeah. and uh, it, it, it's as I say it's a simple but very very powerful means of you know giving giving life to to, to, to people who are suffering and yeah. and you know maybe in a lot of pain maybe no they haven't got long to live or you know it's really uh, an extraordinary thing to behold to see the That's joy that they get from from uh, yeah. so so that so so Medi Cinema is um, is a charity one of the charities that I'm working with it's incredible right. Peachy do you want to take for the final stage the final stage, well, I'll just okay. another straightforward one. I was going to give you a... I've got another 52 weeks after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the point, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're we shouldn't feel it. bad, Andy, because <laughs> by our standard, we're going pretty fast here. So yeah, yeah, I think you're doing I'm a okay cracking job. I mean, you'll right be an army painter before you know it. So we've got something called Wildwood, which is like a, a very deep brown kind of tone. And I, I was just going to suggest applying that over the gold you've just done. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, that'll add a bit of punch into the recesses. So this is going into the, like you say, the recesses? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any bad habits for painting so for us to avoid that I've uh, probably done all of? Just the biggest one for you asking me if I've got any bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, I've got loads, but... Um, <laughs> it's not uh, for this there's, <laughs> there's definitely a vein of uh, painters called brush lickers. Uh, as an artist, <laughs> as a painter, I, I do 2D images as well. Uh, I often lick the brush to get a point to it, and it's not a great idea because they taste bad. Uh, so yeah, avoid that and drinking yeah, paint water. Don't do that. Here's a question: So we're painting these, and obviously we've got fixed colours. Does that? Do you find that constraining? Would you rather just be like, actually, I've got a model here, and I just want to paint it how I want to paint it, or do you like, actually, I see how it looks like this, and I'm going to paint it how it looks? No, no, I'm, 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 enjoy I'm enjoying the discipline of trying to, you know, match, match what's going on here. But it's actually a lot more difficult than it looks. I see. I think. I think. 
My eyesight's going. <laughs> I keep moving it closer and further away. I'm wearing lenses, but I'm, I'm not convinced they're working. Um, that's my excuse anyway. I'm going to stick to it. So, well, here it is. Top what do you reckon? Good stuff. Yeah. Better than mine. Yeah. No, I, I don't true. think so. I've Seen been it. watching yours. I've been secretly... <laughs> I've had dry brush envy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that wraps it up. Um, Andy, thank you so much for sitting and painting some figures with me today. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I can't wait for players to meet Varden Kai when Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is released later this year. Peachy, thank you for spending some time. Uh, stood behind us like a, a sensei. Uh, <laughs> uh, watching us delicately clip bonsai trees, but actually <laughs> murdering them horrifically, uh, in my case. But um, it's been great, so thank, thank you very much for your knowledge. Yeah, thanks, um, and again, thank you, you've been very gracious. Um, well, that's a lot. loved it, thanks very much. Lead your Grey Knights under the tutelage of Andy Serkis as Varden Kai in Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, available to pre-order now.